Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents a great musical hit, The Red Mill, starring Gordon McRae and his three guests, Jack Smith, Lucille Norman, and Jack Kirkwood. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical hit is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On stage tonight is one of the happiest shows that ever hit Broadway, The Red Mill. <laughs> Jack Smith and I are going to slip into a couple of checkered vests and straw hats. And we'll be sporting two of the corniest names that ever bounced off a balcony. Kid Connor and Con Kidder. Lucille Norman is the lovely Gretchen. And Jack Kirkwood plays her father, the burgomaster of the little Dutch town of Kotvik on Zee. So, here's act one of Victor Herbert's The Red Mill. Mr. Conductor, if you please. In old New York. Con, what do you want to go to Europe for? Romance, boy. The European girls will be crazy about you. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Well, not that there aren't plenty of lovely dishes right here in America. If a spare afternoon you should happen to have And you start on a leisurely stroll up Fifth Avenue There is where with all the air You'll see them as they walk With velvets and laces and sables enfolding them Really, you'll nearly drop dead on beholding them. Lucky the earl who can marry a girl from Fifth Avenue, New York. In old New York, in old New York, the peach crop's always fine. They're sweet and fair, and on the square, the maids of Manhattan for mine. You cannot see in Gay Perry, in London, or in court. The queen you'll meet on any street in old New York. Oh, but just the same, kid. I'd like to make the trip. Say, you could go to Paris and marry a French countess. Or go to Holland and marry a Dutch duchess. When is the boat sail? Tomorrow. We're off. Goodbye, New York. Goodbye, New York. We're sailing on our way. Farewell to Queens and Bowling Greens and Brooklyn and Battery Bay. We'll make our home in Reams. And Rome and Rotterdam and Cor. <laughs> A kiss for each and every feet. Goodbye, New York. <laughs> So this is Holland. Hi, Holland. Hey, we got to find a place to sleep tonight. Yeah, and it's got to be cheap sleep. We're broke. Well, let's ask that little Fräulein over there. Okay. Hey, Mabel. Yes? Say, miss, uh, any idea where we could sleep tonight? Well, I don't know. Let me... Oh, how about that red mill? I bet it'd be real warm and comfortable. Yes, very cozy. You two and the ghost. The mill is haunted? Mm-hmm. Every night at midnight, the ghost of a poor, unhappy bride walks through the mill, searching for her lost lover, Hendrick. Thank you, and good night, Red Mill. <laughs> What's your name? Gretchen. 
Oh, why do you look so wretched, Gretchen? <laughs> well, tomorrow is my wedding day. Tomorrow, by this time, I could be the wife of the fat old governor of Zealand. Well, if you don't love him, why marry him? My father is forcing me. Oh, now look, a pretty girl like you shouldn't worry. Of course not. The Rover boys are here. Yeah. <laughs> Got an idea. Yeah? She can't marry the governor of Zealand tomorrow. She marries me right now. Why, I hardly know you. Can you think of a better way to get acquainted? <laughs> Why, I'm falling in love with you at 80 miles an hour. And just wait till he shifts into second gear. <laughs> understand how this happens so fast. You haven't seen very many musical comedies, have you, girl? I can uh, give you a pretty simple explanation. Love is a strange little elf in sprite, blessed with the deadliest aim, shooting his arrows to left and right, bagging the rarest game. Filling our hearts with a glad surprise Almost too good to be true And still can you tell me Why do you love me? Only because you are you, dear Not that I am Not you Where do people go in this country when they want to get married? To the burgomaster. Oh, but my father is burgomaster here, so we'll have to go to the next town. Just one moment, my fine young friend. Father! Have you forgotten, my dear Gretchen? You are not marrying this silly young American, but His Excellency, the Governor of Zealand. Well, you're pretty high-handed, Mr. Burgomaster. Back where we come from, in little old New York, a girl can marry anyone she chooses. Well, this is little old Cutwick and Z. <laughs> and Gretchen... Since you seem to be so fond of this old red mill, I think I shall lock you up here overnight. <gasps> no! And here you shall stay until the governor arrives to lead you to the altar. Oh, Father! In you go! Hey, wait a minute. You can't lock her up. You can't do this. You can't force her to... I guess he can. <laughs> Good day, gentlemen. You know, I think I've seen that guy someplace before. Yeah, on a beer mug. <laughs> What's that? Huh? Oh, it's just the old mill turning. Looks just like a skeleton, doesn't it? Waving its arms in the moonlight. I want to go home. <laughs> the girl I love is inside there. But the boy I love is outside here. <laughs> Gretchen? Gretchen? Are you all right? Gretchen? She's gone. There's somebody up there in the tower of the mill. The day. Listen. The birds have sought their nest. The shadows fall in a darkening fall, and the weary world's at rest. The stars are
Gretchen, is that you? Who else would it be? Hey, Gretchen, how'd you get way up there? I climbed up the stairs inside the mill. Have you seen the ghost? No, not yet. Well, when you see her, ask her if she's got a friend. A live one. <laughs> I can't see your face in the moonlight. But I know you're as lovely as the moonbeams themselves. Moonbeams shining soft above. Let me beg of you. Find the one I dearly love. Tell her I'll ever be Hendrick. That's the name of the ghost boyfriend. Farewell, Hendrick, my love. Gone? Poof. Con, we've got to get Gretchen out of there. I've got an idea. Watch the blades in the mill. Uh-huh. Now, suppose you grabbed hold of one of the wings when it sweeps close to the ground. Uh-huh. Hang on to it. You swing on up and rescue Gretchen out of the tower window on the way down. Uh-uh. Okay, I'll do it. Gretchen, can you hear me? Yes. Look, I'm going to swing up in one of the arms of the mill and rescue you. Oh, be careful. Here I go. So long, Ken. Both my arms. Oh, oh. Gretchen, lean out. Father, Father, lean out all over. Okay, hang on. the ground, all out. Oh, thank you for getting me out of that awful mill. Now we've got to get away from your father. Let's go to the next town, get married. Yeah, and I'll stay here and stall the burgomaster. When he unlocks that door tomorrow morning, he's going to find nothing but echoes inside that old red mill. And when he asks the reason, Turn to the second act of the Red Mill in just a moment. But first, in the year just ended, the American railroads operated each day a greater mileage of fast, modern passenger train service than ever before. And they increased their efficiency so that they moved more tons of freight, more miles, for each hour of freight train service. The gains in railroad efficiency and service, of which these are but examples, are due in large degree to the $4 billion of railroad money spent since the end of the war for improvements. The railroads have installed nearly 300,000 new freight cars. 
They have built 4,700 new locomotives, of which 4,350 are diesel electrics. They have put into service enough new passenger train cars to make up more than 300 streamlined trains. They have improved roadway, terminals, signals, shops, and all the other things it takes to run a railroad. Railroad earnings in 1949 were disappointingly low. This was due in part to a decline in volume of business and in part to operating costs going up sooner and farther than railroad rates and fares. General business and transportation prospects, however, warrant the expectation of heavier freight traffic in 1950 than in 1949. With an increased volume of traffic, the railroads can make more intensive use of their improved facilities. And the more the railroads are used, the greater will be the efficiency with which they operate, and the better will be their service to you. We're ready for Act Two of Victor Herbert's The Red Mill, starring Gordon McRae and his guests Jack Smith, Lucille Norman, and Jack Kirkwood. Still, with ghosts like the mill kept waving his spectral arms, and those around heard mystical sounds which thrilled them with vague alarm. Oh, good morning, Mr. Burgomaster. Hmm? Oh, good morning. What brings you out to the mill so early, Mr. Burgomaster? Just checking up on my daughter. You mean to tell me you're only looking for one girl? Why, in America, I change girls 365 times a year. Every day, a different girl. Why not? I don't eat the same egg every morning for breakfast. <laughs> oh, every day is ladies' day with me. I'm quite at their disposal all the while. And by pleasure, it is double if they come to me in trouble. For I always find a way to make them smile, the little darlings. No doubt I should have married long ago. It's the proper thing to do, you'll all agree. But I never could find any fun in wasting all my time on one. So every day is ladies' day with me. It's a frightful thing to think of all the hearts that I have broken. Though each one fell in love with me without the slightest token. Among my vulgar creditors, I'm fearfully in debt. Because I have afforded anything that I could get. But I must say I've enjoyed the best of what there is in life. I've been lucky in my love affairs. I've never had a wife. But I don't begrudge the little dears those necklaces of pearls. All the money that I've ever saved is what I've spent on girls. For every day is ladies' day with me. Every day is ladies' day I'm with quite me. at their disposal all the while. And my pleasure, way. it is double if they come to me in trouble. For I always find a way to make them smile, the little darlings. No doubt I should have married long ago. It's the proper thing to do, you'll all agree. But I never could find any fun in wasting all my time on one. So every day is Ladies' Day with me. So. Every day is Ladies' Day with me. Your gadding about has nothing to do with my present duties. I've got to check up on my daughter. It's too late. She's already checked out. What? Where is she? Gretchen, where are you? Gretchen! I must find her. I'll spare no expense. No expense? I understand Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson are in this country visiting. I believe I'll hire them. Oh, let me get them for you. I'll get Holmes and Watson on this job for you right away. Hi there, Mr. and Mrs. Connor. We aren't Mr. and Mrs. yet. We couldn't afford to get married. Well, boy, have I got a cure for that. Put on this costume, quick. Huh? I don't get it. 
Well, I'm going to be Sherlock Holmes, and you're going to be Dr. Watson. We collect a fee to find this lost girl, enough to get you married. Oh, where will we go after we're married? I know a wonderful spot. In the beautiful of our dreams, there is never a sorrow or pain. Every trouble and care quickly vanishes there, and no You can stop being Romeo and start being Dr. Watson. We've got some plain and fancy Sherlocking to do. Well, Dr. Watson, how do I look? Oh, very Baker Street, Mr. Holmes. Very Baker Street. <laughs> Gentlemen. Aha. You are the burgomaster of Katwick on Z. <laughs> That's amazing. How did you know me, Mr. Holmes? Elementary, elementary, my dear burgomaster. I want you to meet my assistant and eminent colleague, the celebrated Dr. Watson. Oh, I'm delighted to meet you, sir. Glad to meet you. Yes, indeed. Hey, um, from the way he talks, he must be British. If he were any more British, he couldn't talk at all. <laughs> Well, now, uh, Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, about my daughter. Oh, so she's a boy. How much will you charge to find her? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Our price depends on the difficulty of the job. Yes. Is your daughter young and beautiful? Oh, yes. Well, then it will be very expensive because, you know, beautiful young girls are very hard to find these days. <coughs> How much uh, shall we charge, Dr. Watson? Uh, Dr. Watson says, and I quote, 555 guilders. Mm, that's a great deal of money. Well, where did she disappear from? The old Red Mill. Oh, finding beautiful young girls who've disappeared from old Red Mills falls in our highest price bracket. Uh, Dr. Watson, what is our highest price bracket? Oh, uh, 51,500. <laughs> Fifty-five thousand five hundred and fifty... Uh, uh, five. It's a deal. And I'll pay you the minute you deliver my daughter. Uh, uh, but we must have the money in advance. We have enormous expenses, you know. Magnifying glasses, houndstooth jackets, and bloodhounds... Oh, and... well, here is the money. But I demand that you bring my daughter to this very spot no later than four o'clock this afternoon. In time for her wedding to the governor of Zealand. Oh, shut your trap, Dr. Watson, and go get married. <laughs> Mr. Holmes, in 15 seconds it will be 4 o'clock. If you don't produce my daughter by then, I'll have you thrown in jail. Mr. Burgomaster, I don't think you like me. Your time is up, you swindler. 
Just a minute. Listen. Is that my daughter? Do you believe in the ghost of the old red mill? Certainly not. Then that's your daughter. Gretchen, you're just in time for your wedding to the governor. Ah, uh, there's been a little change in plans, Mr. Burgomaster. You see, I've been going around with Mr. Connor. On windmills. And we liked it so much, we got married. Ma'am, you, you, you mean, I, I, I was... Oh! <laughs> you know, I think the Burgomaster's just blown a gasket. Now, uh, Gretchen, <laughs> let's get away from here. Where'll we go? Well, may I recommend a wonderful spot called Manhattan? Could someone from Holland be happy there? Well, Peter Stuyvesant liked it. In old New York, in old New York, the peach crop's always fine. They're sweet and fair, and on the square, the maze of Manhattan's for mine. He means you cannot see in Gay Perry, in London, or in Park. The peach you'll meet on any street in old Oh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Jack Smith and Lucille Norman will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, this is Gordon McRae giving a vote of thanks to Jack Kirkwood, who played the Burgomaster, and to our entire company. The Red Mill, with book and lyrics by Henry Blossom and music by Victor Herbert, is dramatized for radio by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. These railroads are your hometown partners. They provide jobs for your neighbors. They buy supplies in your town, and they pay local taxes just as you and I. Thus, the railroads are more than just railroads. They are citizens, and mighty important citizens in your hometown. Now, here are Jack Smith and Lucille Norman. Well, thank you, Gordon. It was fun making the Red Mill spin again. Well, Jack, we want you to come smile on our microphone anytime you like. You too, Lucille. You're not conning me or kidding me, are you? <laughs> oh, no, Lucille. You're always a welcome passenger on the railroad hour. And incidentally, be sure to listen next week. Our guest is the wonderful Metropolitan Opera soprano, Dorothy Kirsten. And the show, Noel Coward's romantic operetta, Bittersweet. Mmm, we'll be listening. Good night. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. The Red Mill was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared by arrangement with Warner Brothers, producers of The Hasty Heart, starring Ronald Reagan, Patricia Neal, and Richard Todd. Jack Smith appeared through the courtesy of Oxidol, and Jack Kirkwood by permission of the Bob Hope Swan Soap Program. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the Association of American Railroads. And now keep tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. <laughs> Here, Eleanor Steber, tonight's guest on Voice of Firestone on NBC.